Hello everyone, Dave here from Hooked on Headwaters and today we have a very special guest, Colonel Ken Verdadami and he is going to cover the spawn or the science behind the spawn. Some of you are familiar with Colonel Ken, he's been on our show before, he's covered the moon phases and how it affects bass fishing. He, this guy is the smartest guy I know. He is an astrophysicist, a NASA scientist, an avid fisherman, knows, knows his way around bass, knows the science behind bass and bass fishing, so we're just honored and pleased to have him on the show. We thank you, Ken, and with that said, off you go. Great, thanks, thank you, Dave. All right, so as uh, Dave mentioned, what we're gonna do is we're gonna cover uh, basically understanding the spawn for largemouth bass from kind of the science perspective, and then once we cover some of the basic science and biology, we'll talk about how this relates to actually trying to catch bass during this particular time of year. All right, so without further ado, let's look at the topics we're gonna cover. So we're gonna start, as I mentioned, we're gonna talk about the basic biology of the spawn, how uh, largemouth bass spawning actually works. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about where on a reservoir or lake or a pond you can expect to find uh, bass spawning. We'll go over a little bit of the basic spawning process, the couple of phases that, sp that the bass go through. And then the kind of things that affect the spawn, this is, should help you uh, when you're fishing for this time of year and looking for fish and trying to figure out where they are uh, during the spawning season. And then we'll go into some specifics about actually locating and trying to catch bass throughout the various phases of the spawning season. Uh, we put in a little uh, short segment here about what's different for Florida bass. For those of you like uh, myself who live down here in Florida, fishing headwaters, stick marsh, Keenansville, those kind of places, uh, things are a little different for Florida bass. So we'll cover that real quickly. And then we'll wrap it up with some uh, final thoughts. All right, let's move on here. So biology of the spawn. If you talk to any fisheries biologist, they will tell you that bass spawn essentially anywhere from 64 to 68 degree water temperature. However, it's important to note that there are always some bass that will spawn in cooler water and in warmer water. There's no exact temperature that the bass are going to spawn in. And here's a key point that a lot of people tend to miss. Where you measure the temperature really matters. Okay, so you got surface water temperature, it's 58 degrees at your boat launch and it's 15 feet deep there. Well, that doesn't mean that back in the actual spawning pockets where the bass are spawning, it's not 65 degrees already because the water's only two feet deep and the bass are actually spawning even though the water's only 58 degrees, it's not 58 degrees where they're spawning. So keep that in mind when you're thinking about water temperature. All right, let's move on again, talk some more about basic biology. So if you talk to biologists, they will tell you that bass seem to know when to seek out warmer water, but they don't really understand how the bass do this, but they, in fact, it's pretty obvious from the studies they've done that as the water temperatures start to warm, they know that it's time to move on and, and start to look for this warmer water on the lake. Uh, could be prior experience, right, for many years of doing this, and that may be why the bigger bass in a reservoir are typically the first ones to always move into the spawning locations, followed by the smaller ones. So, remember I talked about water temperature variations, okay? They're gonna vary throughout the lake, regardless of, of what kind of size the lake you are. Maybe in a small pond, it might be somewhat homogeneous, but typically in a large impoundment, water temperature is gonna vary all over the place, and that's gonna contribute to how long the spawning season actually is. Even though the actual spawning process for an individual bass is like an hour or two, because water temperature varies so widely on an impoundment, the spawning season can be many weeks and many months, particularly down here in Florida. It's not uncommon for spawning to go from sometimes in January, maybe as early December, all the way through May and maybe even June. Okay, uh, bass spawn as early as one year old and 10 inches. So, that about when, so even the little guys, they're ready, the female's ready to spawn at that point. And Here's the first important thing as far as trying to catch and locate bass this time of the year. When the water temperature hits 60 degrees, that's when the male bass start heading towards the shallows and looking for those spawning pockets to start setting their beds. Okay, next. So, where do they spawn on a reservoir? Okay, hard bottom is clearly the first choice if it's available. And we're talking about things like gravel, sand, uh, even 
lily pad roots and submerged tree trunks are places bass spawn. A lot of uh, uh, bass fish don't realize that, that if you don't have a lot of this classic hard gravel and rocky bottom, they're going to look for other things and lily pad roots and tree roots, bass absolutely spawn. That's particular note here in Florida, you will see that a lot because a lot of our small ponds and lakes and rivers don't have a lot of rocks and sandy bottom. So depth, shallow water, not, not too surprising there, two to four feet. But again, and this is key, it's dependent on the water clarity because sunlight is the most important thing for the bass to have the eggs become fertile and to hatch. So if you're in a reservoir where there's extremely clear water, like can be here in Florida, bass can spawn in relatively deep water. Here a lake that I know for sure does that is uh, Toho. If you're familiar with uh, Toho out in the Orlando area, uh, I've uh, fished with, with guides and they tell me that the, in the offshore hydrilla, they've seen bass spawn in eight and 10 feet of water because the water's crystal clear and the sunlight can penetrate that deep and it's stable water conditions until the bass will spawn there. So don't always necessarily believe that it's just going to be shallow water. They can go deeper. Okay, so the beds, quite frankly, they could be anywhere uh, in the shallow water, but they tend to be in these, you know, we call them protected coves and shorelines away from wind and wave and flowing water. They want calm areas for uh, the, the, the spawning to take place in. North, north facing cover, north facing coves are probably the number one area to look for because they're going to warm up first and they're going to receive the maximum amount of sunlight throughout the day. So if given a choice, that's the ideal place on a reservoir. Also, any place that's adjacent to hard cover. So if you've got trees or boulders and deeper water, those are prime areas for uh, to look for bass in spawning areas. All right, let's continue on here with the biology, a little bit more deeper into it. Uh, so what happens in the process? So the males are the first, as we all know, they move into the spawning areas first, okay? They're gonna wander around, they're gonna look for one of these suitable areas, as I mentioned before, and once they find one, they're going to use their tail and they're going to start making these big powerful sweeps to clear the bed of any debris and try to get to either that sand or bare rock. And the result of which is going to be a nice, essentially clear circular area on a hard bottom about twice the diameter of the male's body. Like you can see the two beds here uh, in the background in this picture. So that helps you identify if it's a bass bed versus maybe a bluegill or, or a tilapia bed uh, as well. Now, once conditions remain stable, and that's a key point that we'll talk about here in a little while, some more, but if water temperatures and water fluctuations remain stable, the females are then going to move from where they've been staging, which is the first area of deeper water adjacent to these shallow flats, and they're going to start looking for a suitable male and a suitable bed uh, to do the spawning process. Okay, during that particular time of year, what you're gonna see is you're gonna see the big females, they're gonna be cruising around these bedding areas, but they're not what we call locked onto a bed. They're literally just kind of wandering and roaming around because they haven't decided on which male and which bed they're gonna stay on, okay? One thing to note from a fishing standpoint is they're very easily scared off the beds at this point because again, they've got nothing to hold them to a particular spot, but, the good news is, is they will return relatively quickly. So if you're there and you see a big female and for whatever reason uh, you spooked her, uh, if you'll just stop what you're doing, turn the trolling motor off and just literally sit and wait, eventually she will come back into that area and you may get a chance uh, to try to catch her. Now, once the female selects a male, that's when they both become locked onto the bed. Okay, this is the actual spawning process Neither one of them are leaving the bed at that point, okay? And the spawning, the actual spawning process only takes a couple of hours. It's not very long uh, at all. Once she's laid her eggs and the male has fertilized them, she's going to swim off almost immediately and the male is going to remain throughout the rest of the process, okay? So your window to catch a bedding female is actually pretty short. Now, uh, the number of eggs a female carries is kind of related to the size of the female. Um, if you talk to most biologists, they'll tell you that a general rule of thumb, 
about 10,000 eggs per pound of bass. So if you see a 10-pound uh, female and you pretty know it's a 10-pound female, you can expect she's got 100,000 eggs. Okay, that's why it's so important that we take care and release those big females because there's the bigger the female, the more eggs they lay. Okay. Uh, another thing to note is that uh, they release about half their eggs on the first spawn and then they spawn a second time uh, on the same bed essentially and release the second. It's not all at once. Okay. So it's, it's actually a, a, a two-step process. And then, in fact, some of females have been known to spawn a third time. What they'll do is they'll leave the bed, they'll kind of stay in the general area for up to a couple of weeks when uh, they get a new set of eggs they'll rotate right back and they'll look for a new bed and a new male and go through the same process all over again so they can actually be in the area for quite some time all right let's move on again here uh more details so the eggs right they settle to the bottom of the nest the male is going to position himself over the top of the nest, and from this point on he's guarding the nest and the eggs from all predators okay and so what's important to note at this point is that um, if you see a male on a bed with eggs, he's not going to try to eat your lure if you put something in there. What he's doing is protecting the bed and he's going to attack that bait, which means he may not actually, he might pick it up, but he's not going to try to eat it. Okay, and we'll talk more about what that means uh, here in a little while. So. You'll see the, the male bass, when, he, when there's eggs on the bed, he'll be finning. And what he's doing is he's keeping water flowing over the eggs. He's preventing uh, suffocation, quite frankly, and he's preventing sediment from covering uh, the eggs. And as I mentioned, males do not eat at all during the spawning period. So if you catch one of the males, it's not because he's hungry. It's because you've elicited that uh, instinct and that react to protect the eggs and he thinks that your lure is a predator okay uh, important note here is males guard the area of only about six feet around the bed okay so if you make a cast 20 feet on the other side of the bed that male could care less and you'll and when you get within about five or six feet of that bed that's when the male is probably going to take aggressive action and and do something so you got to be reasonably accurate with your cast if you're going to be expect to be catching any bedding fish okay uh the larva hatch uh two to four days about that time again depending on water temperature but it only takes a couple days for them to hatch and then the larva are sweet are free swimming uh in about 10 days time okay the fry they stay in this really big dense school uh they continue to be guarded by the male while they stay in this school until they get about maybe a half inch long which takes about two weeks or so and then once the school eventually starts to break up as the fry start to feed on their own it gets way too difficult for the male to guard them and at that point he abandons them and takes off uh, uh, to deeper water as well and the larvae are left uh, to fend for themselves now water temperature as i mentioned through this entire process is key so if the water temperature block drops below 60 degrees at any time during this process after they've been laid the male is probably going to leave the nest because the water's too cold and you're probably going to lose all those eggs they're probably just going to they're uh, they're not going to fertilize or more likely predators are going to come because they're unguarded and they're going to scuff them all up in short order and they're going to lose that entire uh hatching so uh the fry feed on that yolk sac after they hatch for the first couple of days and then uh, about 68 degrees water temperature is when you'll see them develop their actual mouth parts and it takes about 190 hours to do this and that's when they can start feeding on uh, the zooplankton in the water so once they reach about eight days old or so they're going to swim up and they're going to start being able to actively feed uh, on the environment and they no longer depend on uh, the egg sac from which they hatched from all right let's look at things that affect the timing of the spawn right that's the big thing uh when does this all occur if you're fishing this time of year so there's a couple different factors length of day is a big deal water fluctuations short-term weather conditions and then we'll talk about lunar phase okay so number one length of day the longer days are actually what trigger the start of the bass moving towards water okay a lot of people think it's the temperature it really is not the temperature it's the longer days which 
produce more sunlight, which make the water warm up faster and thereby trigger the bass movement. So yes, warmer water is the end result, but the actual trigger is the longer days, not the warmer water. Stable water is a big deal uh, to the spawn, okay? If the water conditions are stable, which means your reservoir, lake, or pond are not fluctuating, they're not going up and then dropping and then going up again, that supports the start of the spawning season and getting the fish to migrate and looking for spawning areas, okay? If you get fluctuating water, the water starts dropping, that's going to delay the spawn on whatever body of water you're on, and the bass are simply going to move back to the first area of deep water and wait for the water uh, to stabilize. Short-term weather. This is a big deal as well, particularly down here in Florida, because Florida strain F1 bass are significantly more affected by uh, weather conditions than their uh, cousins up north. So if we get a short-term weather change, like we have today, by the way, it's it's clear in a million, and we just had a cold front go through, and the, and the weather's in the high 50s. Maybe it's going to reach 60 degrees today. We've had a couple of warm days before. Okay, that can either delay or put a halt to the spawning activity. So if the bass were on the beds yesterday and the day before, and we get this cold snap, and they haven't started to spawn yet, don't be surprised if you if you were out there yesterday and you saw them, and you go today and you don't see them there, they've moved back uh, and retreated into deeper water. Okay, so just be aware of that and, and watch the temperature uh, as it's going. And then everybody's favorite, the moon. So believe it or not, uh, when you talk to bass hatchery managers, guys who do this for a living, who, right, livelihood depends on spawning bass, they're going to tell you, and they've reported this to biologists many, many times, there is no evidence that there's a strong tendency for the bass to spawn more or less on a full moon or a new moon. It doesn't seem to make any difference. It really is stable water conditions and temperatures, what the bass care about, not lunar phases. Okay, so um, if you're planning your spawning sight fishing trip around the moon, I would suggest you don't do that. I would suggest you spend your time focusing on the weather if that's what you want to do. All right, let's take a look at what could be some likely spawning areas. This is a Place. This is Clear Lake. Never been to Clear Lake in my life. Uh, but if I were going to Clear Lake and someone showed, you, showed me this map, I've circled four areas here. So I'm going to assume that north is up on the diagram. If that's the case, you can see these spawning pockets here. If you look, right, there are areas that are in some way or another, they're north facing banks, they're pockets, they're protected from the wind, they're these coves off in the corners, they're not out in the main part of the lake. So if I was going to go to Clear Lake during the spawn and I knew nothing about the reservoir, I would probably look in these areas first if, before I did anything else. All right, so let's keep going here. So let's look about what does all this interesting science mean about I'm trying to catch bass during this particular time of year, because as most people know, this is probably your best chance to catch your personal best bass, since large females are shallow. Even though they're not eating uh, during the spawn, they're easier to catch because they're in shallow water, and most bass fishermen find it easier to fish in shallow water than to fish in deep water. Okay, if you look at this picture here, this looks like to me, if it's uh, in the right part of the lake, a kind of a nice spawning spot, right? You've got this shallow area, uh, if it's reasonable bottom there, off to the right, you can see the main lake and there's probably deeper water there. These pockets might be great places to look uh, for catching bass. So, number one, once the days become longer, right, you want to become a weather watcher. As the, as the days turn to longer time periods, literally, I would start watching the weather and recording it every single day if you want to go catching bass during the spawn. Okay? Once the water hits 60 degrees, as we talked about on your areas of the lake, that's those bedding areas are gonna become suitable for the bass, and you need to start tracking the water temperature in those specific areas of the lake where the water is now 60 degrees, and those look like likely spawning areas. You don't really care about the rest of the reservoir. You wanna find those places that are likely spawning areas that we talked about, and track the temperature of the water in those specific areas, right? You can ignore the rest of the lake, okay? Again, we mentioned it's prime areas deep water nearby because the females are going to stage in that first area of deeper water near these spawning flats so they can move on to the beds when they're ready. And remember, deep is a relative term, okay? 
depends totally on your body of water. Here in Florida, right, eight feet is really, really deep if you go to some places. Okay, now granted on headwaters, we've got some big pits that are 20, 25 feet, but most of the reservoir is very, very shallow. So if you can locate a spawning flat in one or two foot of water and there is a five, six, seven foot canal or depression nearby, that's probably a really good place to take some white points and start tracking conditions in that area. All right, some more maps here again. If you, again, I, I just pulled this uh, creek arm out of uh, Google. I don't even know what reservoir this is, doesn't really matter. But again, if I was going to go to this reservoir and I'm looking to try to figure out where I should start my search, the two places I circled, particularly the one in the upper right, right, it's a, uh, a little tributary off the main creek arm. It's isolated, it's probably protected from the wind, water doesn't fluctuate very much probably. And if there's, I would look for the first areas of deep water nearby there. And again, those are probably good places to start your hunt. And then at the micro level, if you look at the picture to the right, you know, when you get on the water, again, that's what you're looking for. You know, this particular picture, you know, that open area there may indicate harder bottom. Even if it doesn't, you've got lots of lily pads and cattails and stuff where bass can spawn if they can't find any hard cover anyplace else. Okay. The second thing you do, if the water and the weather remain stable, you should start to see beds and males roaming in those areas that you've selected, okay? That's a clue that you're in the right area, obviously, hopefully enough. But again, if you've picked the right area, you should start to see the smaller males uh, wandering around those areas. And you may, in fact, see some of them actually have created some beds. Obviously, that's a good sign. You found the right area. Again, take some waypoints and make sure you continue to track those particular areas, okay? And realize at this point, if you see the males wandering around and or having made beds, the big females are nearby. That's the key. Now, you might like catching 14 and 15 inch males, but I think most people want to catch the big six, seven, eight, nine pound females. Realize that at this point, when you see this behavior in the shallows, the females are nearby, okay? And the key is they're still actively feeding before they spawn. They stop feeding once they get on the bed, but right now they're actively feeding. So they're nearby and they're feeding. It's a perfect situation to try to catch them. Okay, another, this is a uh, Navionics map here. Again, random reservoir doesn't matter. The point is, if you look at the three circled areas, each one of them has a channel swing bank up against uh, a point or a bank near a spawning pocket. Okay, that's critical. If you look at all three of them, you'll see deep water that comes in close to a nice, protected, shallow flat. That, to me, though, any one of those three areas are classic places to go look for spawning fish. All those three flats should be spawning areas. And right now, if you see males wandering around back there, the females should be staging somewhere in that deep water right off those ledges and those creek channels. So that's what you want to look for uh, when you're searching. Okay? And so uh, any kind of structure, any kind of cover in that first section of deep water is what you're looking for. Okay? Creek channels, ditches, canals, depressions, all of them are good. And if they have cover on them, rock piles, brush piles, submerged vegetation, even better. Okay, if you find a spot that is, it's got deep water, a canal or a ditch, and there's some kind of cover nearby, boy, I would spend, get on your electronics, and I would spend a long amount of time covering every inch of that water and figuring out uh, what it looks like. Because even if you don't see anything the day you're there, you've clearly located the correct spot, and so you want to mark that and come back and keep checking that every time you go, because eventually they're going to show up there. Now, power fishing uh, is really a useful technique at this point, because remember, the, the females are feeding, okay? They're hungry, and they're trying to beef up before the spawn, and so classic power fishing techniques, crankbaits, chatterbaits, swimbaits, all those kind of things, moving baits should be effective for the big females because they're actively feeding at this point. You don't need to go to finesse tactics. The females are hungry. Okay, number four. Now, back on the, sh in the shallow spawning fats, and you actually see females and males together on the beds, all right? Now, 
What you gotta realize at this point is that they've stopped feeding. Once you see them together on a bed, they have essentially locked to that bed. If you see the females wandering around between beds, that's different. If you see them both together, a small male and a big female locked on a bed, you're gonna have to switch tactics at this point if you wanna to try to catch them, okay? What you're gonna do is you wanna tap into their protective instincts and you wanna use lures and or techniques that imitate some kind of potential predator that's invading their nest, because that's what's going on. They're not gonna eat anything, but they are gonna protect their nest from all comers. So who are the big predators for bass? Bluegill? Absolutely. And if you have crayfish on your impoundment, crayfish are another one that are the two primary predators. So any kind of lure that you have, any kind of presentation that can imitate those two times uh, crayfish or bluegills are probably a good bet. The other thing that seems to work, and no one really knows why, but it, again, it's just a matter of probably they're trying to, you, uh, you're tapping into their protective instinct because they're not trying to eat it, is brightly colored, soft plastics always seem to work, right? You've probably heard this many times, bubble gum, uh, floating worms, white worm, right? White trick worms, white and blue, or bubble gum trick worms are very effective during the spawn. And again, because it's some kind of predator that the bass is going to try to protect their nest against. Now, realize that everything may all conditions may be perfect you see a male you see a big female uh they're locked on the bed they're not going anywhere and you cast on that female for what seems like an hour or maybe it actually is an hour and you don't get a strike that is not necessarily uncommon again they're not feeding and if they don't think that your lure is a predator they're simply going to ignore it so you must do something to get them to believe that the lure is actually a predator, so they'll attack it, okay? Stealth, patience, persistence are the key if you expect to sight fish and catch bedding fish. It is not a simple thing to do. It's not like you're watching a TV show where he pulls up on a bed and he sees a nine pounder and he makes two casts and he hooks them and life's great. Okay, you can sometimes spend an hour and a half and they've made 50 casts to that female and they ignored every single thing. It happens on a regular basis, so don't be surprised if that happens. So what can you do? Well, there are two things I think you can do. One is lures that suspend directly over the nest are a good idea because the bass will see that, and again, it could look like a predator to them and elicit that protective instinct. Or uh, some kind of bottom hugging or like a, a jig or a, a soft plastic that crawls along the bottom, cast past the bed, crawl it right up into the bed and just stop it and let it sit there. And literally just let it sit there until they pick it up, okay? And this is, right, you're gonna need a pair of polarized sunglasses to be able to see what you're doing here. This is sight fishing, but you literally just sit there and you watch and see what the bass is gonna do. Now, I will tell you again, this is pretty tricky because you're gonna to need to react instantly to what that bass does. The, the instant you see that bass pick up your lure, you've got a strike. No hesitation. If, if you got slack in your line and you're lying down, you're not catching that fish, okay? You've gotta be on a tight line and you've gotta be watching and the minute that bass picks it up, you gotta set that hook because again, they're simply going to move it off the bed. They may slap at it, they may whatever, but if they pick it up with their mouth, they may have the hook in them, but they're only they're going to have it for less than a second, and so you need to react very, very quickly. All right, let's keep going here. So, number five, when you see males on the bed with eggs and or fry, okay, now what's happened is the females have done their thing and they've left. They've moved back to their pre-spawn staging areas and they've started feeding again, okay? So just because you see males and you see all the fry, you know, the spawn's over and the females are gone. Well, yeah, they're gone off the bed, but they could be literally 10 feet away in that little ditch that's seven foot off the spawning area. So don't go anywhere. You just need to move back and start working that first deep area off the spawning pocket, just like you did at the start of this, okay? And again, power fishing techniques come into play. The females are ready to start feeding again to try to recover from the spawn. So just like you did pre-spawn, 
things like chatterbaits and crankbaits and moving baits, swim baits are all should be good things because those females should be looking to eat. You don't have to entice them to do anything at that point. Okay. All right. So that's in general a, a big overview. So let's look at, for those of us who live in Florida, uh, what's different about Florida? Because there are definitely differences in Florida and they will make a big deal if you're either coming down here from the north or not familiar with Florida bass or you live here and you want to try your hand at, at chasing uh, fish during the spawn. So the spawning season, as you can imagine, is significantly longer than anywhere in the country. As I mentioned earlier, it easily could be December through May, depending on the weather. This year we had some warmer weather, but then it turned cold and that kind of pushed the spawn. So we didn't really get that early spawn like we do a lot of times. But again, the water, the weather continues to warm. You could see spawning activity through May and maybe even into June. Okay. Uh, right. We've got mostly a mild climate down here. We don't, you know, we never see 20s and 30s. I mean, 50 degrees is a cold day in Florida. I like to tell people that down here, right? When it's below 70, it's cold. And when it's below 60, it's really cold. And it is. I mean, and, and Florida bass are no different. They, they don't like cold weather as well. Okay. But we don't really have the seasons that you guys have up in the north. And so it's mild all year round, and that contributes to the, the spawn season lengthening. Okay. So the, the bass don't have this same sense of urgency to move up uh, when the weather and the longer days start occurring, the water warms up and start to do that spawning activity and spawn because it's kind of that way all year round. And so there's no sense of urgency and that lengthens the spawn period. Now, because Florida, if you think about it right, most people don't realize how many latitudes Florida covers, but it's a really long state. And because of that, bass can be in many different stages of the spawn at the same time throughout the state. So the bass down uh, in the Miami area can already be post-spawn and the guys bass fishing up in uh, Gainesville or, or up north from northern Florida, they may still be in the early pre-spawn stages. Uh, we're all in Florida, but Florida's a big state and it can be the weather up north can be very different from here in the central part and down in the south. So realize that Florida is not just Florida, it's different, okay? Okay, so there's an upside and a downside to Florida fishing, right? The upside, of course, is we get an earlier spawn than anywhere else in the country. You guys who are ice fishing in December, January, right? We're worried about, right? It's it's early February right now. There's a lot of you, I think, that are going ice fishing tomorrow, okay? Literally, because your lakes are frozen. Well, we're we're pre-spawn here for sure, uh, and, and that's just the way it is in Florida, right? So that's a good size. The other upside is Florida bass, the Florida strain F1 bass are typically much bigger than their cousins. That's just a fact. And you see the biggest bass in the country with the exception of maybe some of the lakes in Cali California, but those are transplant bass as well. Those are F1 Florida bass as well. They're not native to California. That is the largest strain of bass, okay? And the other thing that's a positive is the bass tend to move in big waves and literally flood an area of shallows when they go to spawn. Okay, that's the good news. Now, there's a downside like there always is, and that is Florida bass literally cannot stand cold weather. They absolutely hate it. And when the water temperature drops, the bass just shut down. They just do. And if you've ever fished here in Florida in this time of year and the water temperature is in the low 60s and you go out there and you just have a, you just struggle, that's you know you're not alone you're not necessarily doing anything wrong it's very very difficult uh, and that's why you see uh, a lot of people a lot of guides switch to shiner fishing in the winter time because on a relative basis it's a little easier to catch bass with live bait when the water's colder than it is with lures still not great like it is with warm weather but it is on a relative basis a little easier and so you'll see that but um, we get those late winter and early spring cold fronts like we have today and they completely shut down Florida bass and you literally, you just got to wait it out. I mean, if you're coming down here for the north or you're on vacation, I get it. You're going fishing anyway. I get it. Use that time 
to if you're going to be here for a week or so use that time to hunt and wander around the lake right get on your electronics i know some of you maybe it's the first time you've ever turned them on but turn the things on you paid a lot of money for them and go and look for those underwater places and mark them so that when the water temperatures start to come up you don't got to go spend your day hunting during prime time you're ready to go you know the exact same spots to go and so don't think you got to go cast a hundred times an hour every time you fish sometimes you might want to just put the rods away and go look and if i were out in the water today instead of doing this i wouldn't be fishing i would be on my electronics probably the whole time just wandering around looking and, and marking spots okay so right up north on a reservoir that's a typical impoundment that's got a dam and it's a bunch of creek arms you're going to see beds basically scattered kind of loosely around these creek arms in those places around the reservoir that we talked about in florida it doesn't necessarily work that way in florida you can have this because we don't really we don't have right impoundments with a, a dam and it's been backed up and we got these creek arms they're just kind of these big sometimes a big flooded cow pasture so we don't have that kind of structure so we have these big spawning flats and big spawning bays and what you'll see is that particularly if it's located near one of these canals we have a lot of man-made canals in these areas and you got this big expanse of, of flat that could be two to three feet for acres and acres you'll see uh the area flooded with beds they just kind of all line up close to each other because it's a great prime area and all the bass in that area go to the, almost in the one spot so they're they're pretty easy to find once you do that and if you look at this picture that's exactly what i'm talking about those beds are literally on top of each other and there are fish on on every single one of them you will see that in florida and you will typically not see that kind of behavior uh every place else all right let's look at specific tactics for florida spawning bass okay so if you're going to sight fish the big female once she's on a bed in florida i'm going to tell you that everything everything's got to be perfect in order to make that work okay you don't need to spend an hour trying to catch that bass like you'll see guys up north do okay if you make a couple of casts on that bed and she doesn't strike immediately i would not waste any more time i mark the spot head on to the next bed go look for something else and then come back but don't sit there for an hour you're not going to catch that fish okay it's just not it does not work that way now also avoid a very common mistake of what i call blowing out an area okay what you'll see guys do is right they'll get to a flat and it looks perfect and maybe their buddy told them that they saw beds there yesterday whatever and they'll start they'll put the trolling motor down and they'll start wandering around and zigzagging all over the place okay well there are beds everywhere in a spawning flat and you're basically just ruining that entire area you're going to spook every single fish and not just one or two it could be 20 or 30 beds so don't take that tactic down here in florida what you want to do is pick an area that either you know their beds on or they're likely beds to be there put your power pole down because you're going to be in shallow water and then fan cast the entire area all 360 degrees and again depending on the where we are in the spawn will dictate what kind of actual bait you use but fan cast all around and maybe a second or a third time and only then right if you don't catch a fish or get a strike you can move on right but if you if you either spook a fish or you catch one well now you know that that area is active there are bass there so don't go anywhere stay where you are and keep fishing that area if you, if you need to move move in short little increments right put the trolling motor down on one or two and move very slowly to another spot and then again power pole down and fish the entire area it's a very different way to to bed fish than uh up north and who knows you may be another dean rojas and and catch five bass at 45 pounds right which is what was done at, at toho a couple of years back again during this particular time of year that tournament was actually happened during the spawn okay so let's wrap this up with a couple of final thoughts here so no doubt if you've been bass fishing for any length of time you know that sight fishing for big females can be a controversial topic no argument i'm not here to tell you it's right wrong or indifferent but what i will tell you it's a little bit of science and that is that there have been no studies that show that catching big, big bedding females has had a significant effect on the bass populations of any given body of water okay 
Now, there's a caveat to that. And what the caveat is, is that you release those fish, okay? So me personally, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna stand in my soapbox here for about two seconds, right? If you're gonna sight fish for big females, I don't have any problem with you doing that, but please do it responsibly. So what's responsible? Responsible is very simple. Don't ever keep one of those big females. If you catch one, fabulous, right? Get your camera out, take a bunch of quick photos if you want, right? We have the Florida Trophy Catch Program. If you catch a bass over eight pounds, so go ahead and weigh it. Even take a few measurements so you can get a fiberglass uh, mount made, really cool, and then get her back in the water as fast as possible in exactly the same place you caught her. Please don't stick her in your live well, drive around the lake, go to the ramp and say, look what I caught and show your 20 guys at the ramp at Headworth that you caught 10 pounder. I will tell you, no one cares, okay? Release that bass right where you caught her so that she can spawn. Because remember, she's an eight pounder. She's got 80,000 eggs uh, that are potential new bass in that reservoir. So please let her go right then and there, okay? And we don't want to see right that last picture there in the bottom right hand corner. Okay, enough about soapbox. I think uh, that is pretty much it. As uh, Dave said, I'll be out there on Saturday with the guys. If you want to talk some more detail about this or anything else to do with bass fishing, or for some reason you don't care about it, bass fishing, you want to talk about astrophysics, that's fine too. I'll be out there and we can chat about all that kind of stuff Saturday afternoon. So I look forward to seeing you all out there on Saturday.